Check it out, we did it! <laughs> hey guys, I'm Lauren and welcome to the Side Chef Studio Kitchen. Today's recipe doesn't really need an introduction. We will be making Crunchwrap Supreme's Home Style. What does home style mean? That means you can put whatever you want in it. You wanna make it vegan? Check out the ingredient list. Double beef, great. Double cheese, even better. Let's get started. So first we're just gonna prep our lettuce and tomato. We're going to dice the tomato and thinly slice the lettuce. Smaller is better, just so it's not too chunky in the crunch wrap, but really the size is up to you. Now we're going to make the taco seasoning. It's actually super simple. Most of these spices you already have at home. First, we're going to do the chili powder. Next, we've got some cumin, and then paprika, and garlic powder. Got a little sugar, some cornstarch. Most pre-made taco seasonings will already have a little bit of cornstarch in them. That's what gives the beef that sort of saucy texture at the end, um, which is why we're adding it here. And then add salt. And finally, we add the cayenne. Make sure you use a non-spicy chili powder, otherwise this is gonna be a fiery, fiery dish. Now that we've mixed everything together, we're just gonna set this aside. Now we're going to brown our beef. You can use ground pork, you can use ground turkey, you can use a soy protein crumble. It's totally up to you. Um, we're gonna start with a tablespoon of oil and heat that up in the pan. If you're using a lower fat protein, I recommend using two to three tablespoons of oil because that extra fat will give the final sauce a really nice flavor. And now we're going to add our beef. Good sizzle. You're gonna cook the meat for two to three minutes over medium high heat, just until it loses that pinkness. Reduce the heat to medium, and now I'm going to drain some of the fat from the pan. If your beef didn't give off that much fat, totally fine. You just wanna leave about one to two tablespoons in the pan. Smells fudging good. Now that we've browned our beef, we're going to add the spice mix we made earlier, some tomato paste, and a little bit of water. We're gonna then cook it down for about four to five minutes until it has a thickened, slightly saucy texture. If your meat seems like it's starting to dry out, feel free to add back a little bit of that fat from earlier. If you don't have fat from earlier, feel free to just add a few splashes of water. It's time to make our cheese sauce. If you want a vegan or dairy-free option, feel free to check out my cheeseless cheese sauce on the Side Chef app. Additionally, if you want to use store-bought nacho cheese, go for it, but I think you'll be surprised how easy it is to make your own at home. We're going to start by melting down two tablespoons of butter, adding two tablespoons of flour, and whisking it for about two to three minutes just to get that raw flour taste out. If it starts to brown, turn the heat down. You don't want that. So this is flour and butter. It's dope. What we're making right now is called a roux. It's a base for lots of sauces and gravies, good mac and cheese sauce. Um, it's actually a really useful technique. Awesome. This has been going for about three and a half minutes. I've been whisking constantly, and now I'm gonna add the milk. I wanna add it in two batches. Between each batch, I'm gonna whisk to combine. And now we're gonna cook it over medium heat, whisking constantly for about six to eight minutes until it thickens up. Be patient with it, because it might not seem thick at first, but I promise you, it will get there. Now that the mixture has thickened, we're gonna turn off the stove and remove the pan from heat. The reason we do that is because if we add the cheese, when the sauce is too hot, it might separate or get gritty instead of becoming a smooth sauce. Now we're gonna add the cheese, the salt, and the chili powder and mix it into the sauce until it's fully combined. If your cheese isn't completely melting into your sauce, you can throw it back on the stove over low heat for a couple of minutes. Now to make it just a little more pourable, we're gonna add an extra tablespoon or two of milk. Let's give it a try, see how it is. Amazing. I'd eat this on anything. Okay guys, we made it. It's time to assemble. We're gonna start with about a quarter of the ground beef. Spread the ground beef into a circle in the center of the tortilla, roughly the same size as the tostada. Next, we're gonna add our cheese sauce. I like to add around a quarter of a cup. If your cheese sauce is thickened up while you've been waiting to assemble, you can either put it back on the stove with a splash of water or milk, or just throw a little bit in the microwave for a few seconds. After we add our cheese sauce, we're gonna add our tostada. If you don't have a tostada, you can also use a crispy taco shell broken in half. You can even use some tortilla chips in a pinch. You just really wanna add that crunch in there. If your tostada is a little bit uneven, feel free to just crack it so that it lays a little flatter. That makes it easier to add the rest of the ingredients. Just like that. After the tostada, we're gonna add the sour cream. I like to add around two tablespoons, but again, totally up to you. You can kinda just spread it around a little if you want. 
At this point, you can add a little bit of your favorite hot sauce. Final thing, the vegetables. Uh, I like to start with tomatoes, and lastly, the lettuce. The nice thing about using such big tortillas is that you actually have a lot of flexibility with how much of each ingredient you add. And now it's time to wrap. This is my favorite part. First, we're going to take an edge, any edge, and fold it all the way towards the middle. Next, we keep our hand on top of that edge we just folded, and we're gonna take our other hand and place it under the tortilla and pull it up over to make a crease. Then we're gonna to wanna to rotate the tortilla slightly and fold the next corner. So you're just gonna keep folding until you have a perfect pentagon. You crunched it, you wrapped it, and there you have it, crunch wrap. All right guys, we're almost there. Now we're just going to dry fry the tortillas over medium high heat for one to two minutes. Seam side down. The goal of doing this is really to just seal the crunch wrap shut and give it a little bit of color. Then you're gonna flip and cook for another one to two minutes until golden brown. Oh my God, that color is perfect. I cannot wait to eat these. By dry frying them at the end, we not only crisp up the outside and give it some nice color, we also warm up all the ingredients inside before we dig in. <laughs> We're almost done, channel the excitement. Let's cut into the middle and see how it looks. <laughs> wow, they look perfect. They're amazing alone or with whatever else you want to serve them with, some extra cheese sauce, extra hot sauce. Serve them while they're hot and still crunchy, but they're also great the next day. I hope you enjoy.